Okay, so this is the solution to the homework problem. I wanted to show it to you and, and to discuss it a little bit. Uh, the problem was to take the uh, physical constants for water, solid, liquid, and vapor at a constant pressure and compute the free energy curves and, uh, well, yeah, look at the enthalpy, entropy, and free energies. So turns out uh, Wikipedia seems to have a, a fairly significant data set for uh, water. And uh, all the data that I used in this, I took from there. And I've, I've seen other people's solutions and you, you got them from other sources and that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, you know, I'm not you know, checking on the quality of people's you know, web searches or, or whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm checking that all of the, the math is logically connected. So for, for my first pass at doing this, I just said, well, let's, let's just, you know, get a rough estimate of, of things, right? So I, I took the heat capacity for the solid, liquid, and vapor to be you know, roughly constant. Uh, I uh, took approximations for the uh, latent heat of transformation from solid to liquid, liquid to vapor. And the enthalpy of formation, and this is for the liquid phase, uh, at 298 and 1 atm. So first we'll do the uh, enthalpy curves. And uh, in this, I just took it to be constant, which means that if you integrate, oops, which means if you're integrating uh, Cp dt from T1 to T2, you just get that constant heat capacity. So I created a function, which is the path uh, from T1 to Tu, T2 at a constant heat capacity. And then I've shown this in a, in a previous video, uh, computing the enthalpy of the solid, the liquid, and the vapor, assuming that you start in the liquid, you then integrate the liquid from the reference 298 to the melting point, you transition and then integrate the solid uh, to the melting temperature. The liquid, you start at the reference, and then you just integrate to the temperature of interest. The vapor, you start in the uh, liquid, you integrate the liquid to the vaporization temperature, transition to the vapor, and then move along the vapor path until you get to the temperature of interest. And if you do that, you wind up with enthalpy curves that look like this. So you've got the solid, liquid, and vapor. Entropy curves, this comes from Cp over T dt from T1 to T2. And again, I took the same paths. Uh, noteworthy that the delta S going from uh, solid to liquid is the uh, latent heat. So that's the delta H going solid to liquid over TM. And if you do that, again, you wind up with solid, liquid, and vapor curves. Gibbs free energy, you know, G is equal to H minus TS, depends on the temperature, and you get curves that look like this. So these are the uh, H and these are the Gibbs curves. And you can see the transitions happening, you know, looks like the right positions. Zooming in, you can see they're very close, if not exact, here and here. Okay, so this was what I did starting out and I, I thought to myself, well, what happens if I improve by doing a better job of uh, taking the data, right? So instead of just assuming constant heat capacities, what if I gave the heat capacities temperature dependence? So there are tables in the 
textbook, or sorry, another textbook in the Wikipedia site, and they give the uh, uh, temperature, and this is in uh, degrees Celsius, and then they give the uh, heat capacities. So I took this for the solid, the liquid, and the vapor, and this is what they look like. So they look you know, roughly linear. Well, not really when you zoom in, but for now, we can approximate these to be linear. So I took and I applied a fit for each. And from that fit, I got the uh, intercept and the slope. So you can see the, uh, the solid has a, a fairly significant uh, slope. But when you start getting to the, uh, oops, the, the liquid and the vapor, it's much flatter. So now I've got a set of these constants, A liquid, B liquid, A vapor, B vapor, that expresses the polynomial, or in this case, linear, of fit to the heat capacities. So then I also included uh, the reference energies, enthalpies and entropies for the solid and liquid and vapor. And I was going to use those, but I realized that if you look at these heat capacities, the heat capacities are really only valid over narrow ranges. So rather than trying to integrate, say, my uh, uh, you know, vapor and say, well, I can take those all the way down to 298, well, that gives you a whole range that you don't really know about. So I decided to follow the same path, even though I, I've got this data set, I only used the liquid as the reference. And that allows us to, uh, you know, always start, you know, in the liquid and then to move up to the vapor phase or move down to the solid. Okay. Uh, I also took the uh, enthalpy of transition and I took it out to higher order. So that's a, you know, 6,010. Uh, and then the data set also gave us the entropy of uh, the entropy of transition. And I said, oh, okay, maybe I'll use that. Uh, turns out, and this was something I, I discovered as I went forward, that, uh, well, these don't match. So anytime that you have uh, data and you think, well, that they sh you should be able to, to see a direct comparison, uh, you should compare them. Turns out, if you use, if you use, oops, the uh, 109 versus 107, the temperature of vaporization changes fairly significantly, right? There's a, only a, I computed this to be about a 1.7% difference between the two, uh, but that shifts the, the behavior. So I, I think, I think that's probably a, either typographical error or well, yeah, probably a typographical error. Because if you look at it, you know, uh, 109.02, and this is 107. Point, well, actually, maybe it's just a, a error in the data. Either way, turns out that's wrong, uh, and it's impactful. So going back down to the enthalpy, uh, substituting in our polynomial. This is now the path. 
So I included that. Wow, I included that here, uh, which means that our path function now has an A and a B. So start in liquid, integrate the liquid to the uh, melting temperature, transition, and then integrate the solid to the temperature of interest. Uh, the liquid, you start in the liquid reference and you integrate to the temperature of interest. And then for the vapor, uh, you start at the liquid 298, uh, integrate the vaporization temperature, transition to the uh, vapor, and then integrate the vapor phase uh, to the temperature of interest. And if you do that, you wind up with uh, curves. And in here, I, I put the, the solid lines are the improved Uh, the improved data and the dashed lines uh, are the original. Uh, so there's a, a slight change. Uh, you can see kind of a, you know, there's a effective curvature here that uh, a curvature, but uh, uh, the slope of the the lines for the solid are a little bit different. Uh, going to the entropy, this is the changed entropy. So you wind up with that function, which I then substituted in here and here to get me the delta S path. This is the entropy of the solid, liquid, and vapor phases, which give you something that looks like this. And again, looking at a comparison, they're very similar. The, the solid seems to have a larger change, but if you think about it, the solid also had a slope, which was uh, the most significant. So you would imagine that that, that would be uh, important. Going to the Gibbs free energy, the improved Gibbs free energies are just again, H minus TS. And this is uh, a figure showing the improved Gibbs free energies and the improved enthalpies. Uh, making a comparison, there's a, a small shift. There's a small shift, but it's, it's not really uh, huge. And uh, you know, zooming in here, you can see. You can see the uh, intersections so here and here. And uh, oh, actually, sorry, I guess they're over on this side. Here and here. And uh, here and here. Don't change very much. And to emphasize that, I, I came in to uh, zoom in. So again, almost no change there. Uh, so what, what have I learned doing this? Well, one thing I learned is that uh, when you get so outside of the uh, accessible data range, things start getting weird. Uh, I took the free energy and the enthalpies and I took them away from the, the data range where we had acceptable data, you know, down to uh, zero Kelvin, and you know things start getting really strange, right? You you wind up with uh, well, curves that that go the wrong direction, right? They got the wrong slope. Uh, same thing here. That, that, that well, this this actually doesn't look terrible. You know, I could certainly imagine that being uh, being somewhat reasonable. But uh, this, though, is, is uh, definitely just outright wrong because it's saying the entropy is increasing. I also found uh, computing delta G, right? This is the delta G for the improved and the uh, original. They don't change much. 
Same thing for the liquid and, and uh, vapor transition, right? So this is uh, delta G is equal to zero. That is our uh, vaporization temperature and our melting temperature. And that was a little bit of a surprise to me. Uh, and I, I say that because uh, this is the uh, solid heat capacity. And you know, it's, it's got a fairly significant change. Uh, further, if, if you come in and you start looking at the, 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 the liquid and the vapor, they're also, uh, well, they're weird, right? Uh, they've got a, a really strange shape to them. And this just, just comes out of the data. Uh, but within you know, this range, uh, linear is, is uh, well, close enough to constant to, to do the job. So I guess the, the, the thoughts are is first that the temperature dependence within a fairly narrow range of temperatures is not particularly significant. Uh, and we know that what drives transitions is this uh, delta G between the phases. So even approximating phases with constant heat capacities uh, seems to be acceptable. And uh, the other thing we discovered was that uh, you need to have the uh, correct values and small deviations do seem to be significant. So the fact that the data given uh, does not match, that leads to a, a kind of substantial shift in the temperature of, transit, uh, temperature of vaporization. So I will uh, return this uh, notebook uh, along with this video so you can play with it. Uh, I believe that you can have a, a Mathematica viewer uh, and it's a nice software package and it's worth looking at the, uh, the student license uh, if it's something you're interested in.